you might not need to build your next NAN workflow. NAN just released a feature that claims to do it for you instantly. But let's be honest, we've heard this before. You wait 20 minutes for a barely working workflow and spend longer debugging it than you would have done building it. After building systems for over 30 clients, I've learned that instant rarely means reliable. So I'm gonna put it to the test right now and show you three use cases, easy, medium, and hard. By the end, you'll know if this makes you 10 times faster or just waste your time. And if you're new, I'm Simon. I help business owners build AI automation systems that help you reclaim time so that you can scale your business without scaling your workforce. If that sounds like something you like, we've just launched a free course and the link is down in the description below. So to get this set up, you need to be on an NAN cloud account. It's coming to self-hosted plans also, but isn't available yet. So make sure you go to manage and that you're on the 1.116.0 latest beta version. So when you're inside the workflow, you'll see the add first step, which was always how we used to build workflows, but you'll now also see build with AI. And if you click on build with AI, you get this text to workflow interface on the right hand side. It shows you how many credits you've got left. You get 20 with the free, tr free trial plan and 50 with the starter plan. Each credit is worth one prompt to the system and it gives us a few examples here. But first up, we're gonna test an auto reply system, which is kind of ironic because actually the whole point in email in the first place was supposed to be to save us time. But let's see if NAN can draft responses without making you sound like a bot. So we're gonna go into the free school community and we're gonna go into the resources and we're gonna do this one first, the smart email auto reply, and we're gonna paste it in there. So when I receive a new Gmail, analyze the content to determine the urgency and category. And I've left it quite vague here saying, actually create the categories, determine if a reply is needed based on whether it's a question, request, or requires acknowledgement. If a reply is needed, draft a response as a Gmail draft, but don't send it. Now we're gonna send that. And what we're gonna see is it thinking through and grabbing the context from the nodes inside NAN and pre-filling that context. And the bit that other workflow builders normally fail at is understanding the context fully and pre-filling all of the different parameters. So I'm intrigued to see how it handles an easy common use case like email replies. Now that took about a minute to create. So that was pretty quick. And that's quicker than I could have done it myself as an experienced builder. It comes with some setup instructions. So configure the Gmail trigger, configure the OpenAI chat model, and configure the Gmail node over here for creating drafts. It tells us what the workflow will do. And let's have a look and see what it's done here. So we've got when a new email arrives, we've got some workflow configuration. So we are presetting some categories like urgency level and different categories that it's made up for us, like feedback, request for approval, newsletter, promotional, automated notification. And I assume those are then fed into the prompt inside the AI agent. So the first AI agent says, very simple prompt, analyze the following email and determine the urgency level, the category, and whether reply is needed. And then it passes in the subject, the email address it's from, and the email body, provide your analysis with reasoning, and then it does actually connect it to a result which will output urgency, category, whether reply is needed, true or false, and the reasoning there. So that's quite clever how it's done the JSON parser there. It then feeds into an if node, which is if a reply is needed, then it should continue and draft a response. And we've got a separate prompt here, separate LLM chain or AI agent as it's used to draft a professional email. It passes in the category, the urgency, the original email, and says, please draft an appropriate response. It then should create that draft in the email. So I'll be really intrigued now to understand if this actually works in practice. It's also named the workflow, smart Gmail triage and auto draft response generator. And that only costs one credit. So we'll make sure the Gmail is connected to the right account. And then we've got OpenAI chat model. We'll just use GPT-41 mini in both for now. And what we're gonna do is just execute the workflow. It's gonna pull the latest email, go through the process, and we can review that there. So if we look in the analyze email content and open this up, we can see immediately that it's tried to pull the right information from the email, but not understood actually without a work 
without an execution, what the subject is, what the from attribute is, and what the body is. So all of those are being passed as undefined. And therefore, when it goes through, it's saying in the reasoning, the email is empty with no subject sender or content, which obviously is not true. So we'd go back and say, and what we can do is actually test out the editing function of this. So how well can it actually amend the work it's already done and how quickly? So the subject sender and content are incorrect. They're not populating. So we'll run that through. It's saying it's fixed the field references. We go into here open it up and now it's actually pulling correctly the subject the from and the email body so it's identified the data that's coming in and actually changed that accordingly so we'll just need to run it through again it's saying a reply is not needed however again it's it's incorrectly identified that actually a reply is needed here because it's not taken the JSON dot output dot reply needed. So there's a few nuances here that if you're a beginner, you might struggle with. But if you're an experienced workflow builder, will be obvious when you start running through it. So the email is a follow up regarding interest in an inbound system offer, which is time sensitive but not urgent. It seeks a response to continue or stop follow ups. So let's execute it again. It should now go through the true branch. But what we're probably going to see, because it hasn't updated the draft response prompt here, is actually we've got, again, the same issue of pre-populating dynamic data is not quite up to scratch. And that's because we need to put output dot before everything. So we're not going to waste a credit typing that in. But it also hasn't understood that we need to pull the original details from a previous node. So what I'm going to do is actually ask it to do that and see if it can do that. So it's saying it's now fixed that. So we'll go into the draft response and it's correctly pulled the analysis here, which is the reasoning, but still has not correctly pulled the from the subject and the body, which actually should come from the when new email arrives. So I'm impressed with the overall structure, but the attention to detail is hard to get right right now. And this could change if NAN allow us to put in a different model rather than just stick with whatever model or LLM they're using on the back end. Great. So now we've asked it to correct that again. It's cost us another credit, but it's now received all those details. So let's run it through one final time and see if it can create a draft in our inbox for us. So we're coming back here. We've got a new email to test and the email is asking about the price of the school community. It's saying, yes, we do need a reply. It's drafted a response. Thanks for reaching out. The price of the school community varies depending on the membership level. So it's actually even left some placeholder parts for us to fill in. And then it's saying actually it's created the draft. However, we've got the nuance problem again, where it's actually added the message to a draft. The subject is not defined in the previous response. And it also hasn't put the email to send as a reply to that specific ID of email. So, so if I go into my drafts, you can see that it is there in the draft, but there's no subject and there's no recipient. So it's not actually replying to that email in particular. So I'll say the subject isn't being passed through and it doesn't draft a reply to that specific email. Now, what I'm trying to get here is an understanding of how well it can actually go and amend the workflow based on my understanding of where it's gone wrong. And this is where previous workflow builders have really struggled because they'll often rebuild everything from scratch. So actually it's added in the subject here, which is pulled from the original subject line it's added in the message and it's added in the thread ID. So let's see if we run that through, will it now create a draft inside the email? And it has, it hasn't populated the two box so we can refine it further, but it's actually put the draft directly in the email itself. Workflow two. Now this one's supposed to automatically extract text from PDFs and describe images, tackling all those files sitting in your Google Drive that you swore you'd organize. It's more difficult than the first one because it's handling filtering conditions. So let's see what happens. When a file is uploaded to the workflow, detect the MIME type. If it's a PDF, take one action. If it's an image, take another action. That's the essence of it. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna to go to build with AI. And it's always interesting to see the first iteration of this. So we've got a first version. It's assumed that we're going to be uploading the file by a webhook, which is fine. We'll ask it to change that to a form so we can upload a file to test. It's going to detect the file type and this looks correct. And then it's routing. So is it a PDF? Is it an image? 
And if it's a PDF or an image, let's take different routes. And then at the end, it's trying to insert a tape insert into a documents table using uh, SQL, but actually we want it to use the inbuilt data function. So what we're going to do is just ask it to make those changes. And you can see as the workflows get more complex, that actually you've got to be more precise with your instructions, otherwise it will start making assumptions about that. So this is just all about planning. But thankfully, it's understanding the instructions really well. It's now got a file upload at the start and it's inserting into a documents table. We need to add our model and it's added this text input. Describe what you see in this image in detail or that might have been default. It's going to format the image data or the PDF data and it's going to insert it into the documents table. However, we've not created that data table, so it hasn't gone ahead yet and created that for us. So we need to create the documents table. We'll get it to map automatically to that table, but let's put in a file and see what it comes through as. So if we click execute step, it's going to open up this file up upload and it's pre-populated this description. Now, the great thing here is NAN recently updated the way you pass binary files through. So you can now actually call them from an expression. So I don't need it to be in the previous node here. And what we've done is we've passed a PDF through this process and it has successfully extracted text from the PDF, formatted that PDF data. Although again, it's misunderstood the parameters here that should be json.txt and then try to insert that into the documents. But again, it's not done the nuanced version here. So this is like one level off being great because actually the flow was really succinct and powerful. It was exactly what I wanted, but missing some of the key details. That means if I'm less technical, I'm going to find it harder to set this up. Let's try running an image through. So this is just a thumbnail image. We'll run that through, but now we're getting an error inside this OpenAI node. We're calling the input binary file as the same expression that we did previously. So we are passing in the correct data. However, we're getting an error in here. And I think this is because we're trying to basically analyze the image using this OpenAI node, and it's not quite understanding that we want to pass the binary data through there. So not particularly successful. We'll now talk about the third case, and we're going to really put it to the test because we're going to call an external API similar to what we might replace here. So LinkedIn scraping. If you've ever copy pasted somebody's job title into a CRM, you'll know exactly why this workflow should exist. So let's see if NAN can actually build a LinkedIn scraper or LinkedIn profile enricher using an external service. So when a new role is added to Google Sheets with a LinkedIn URL in column A, use Appify LinkedIn scraper to extract the person's name, job title, company location, and headline. Write this data to columns B through F in the same row then create a new record in Airtable base and the contacts table. So let's create a new workflow, build with AI, send the prompt, but I'm going to change it from a Google Sheets to insert the a profile URL directly because what we're really testing is can it connect to Appify and we'll pass in my LinkedIn URL and see if it can actually use an external service and go and search their API docs and set that up successfully. There is one thing I really like about this, which is it always uses the set or edit fields node to actually configure certain things in the workflow, which mean you're not hard coding things into scrapers directly and you're actually allowing the user to come in here and actually change certain things and in here it's added things like the api token the actor id the google sheet id etc so maybe it's a bit overkill but it does make it easier to pre-configure things just in one node and then they're all passed in dynamically inside here so interestingly enough what i assumed it would do is go and find me an appify scraper but what it said is I'll set up the HTTP request for you and I'll pass in the URL, but you've got to go and find the Appify scraper, which kind of negates the need for actually it building the workflow in the first place. It's then going to pull the correct data out and write it to Google Sheets or Airtable. But I wonder if I give it a LinkedIn scraper or a URL to that, whether it could actually then create that request. And this is my favorite LinkedIn profile scraper, Harvest API. So I'm going to come back and ask it to use this scraper and we'll see if it can actually go and update the 
HTTP requests based on the inputs that that scraper is expecting or whether we still need to do the hard work of connecting to that external scraper. Okay, and it's now saying that it has updated the Appify Actor ID to use the Harvest API LinkedIn profile search scraper. So we can see it in here. We still need to add our Appify API token. So we've put our Appify API token, API token directly in the workflow configuration there. What we're going to do now is execute the workflow, but actually immediately I can see that this is going to be more work because it's saying it cannot find the requested resource, this actor. And we've got the Appify API token showing there. So that's not best practice either, because if I'm sharing this like I am now, you're able to see my Appify API token rather than putting it in as a credential. So although it set up the right premise for the workflow and the logic helps me out with the planning, right now it struggles with actually connecting to external APIs. So it leads me to the ultimate question, which is, is this going to save you time or cost you time? And my answer to that is it totally depends on whether you are well-versed in building out workflows. I would not start here as a beginner, hoping that this will build a magic workflow that works for your complex use case for you. However, if you're an experienced builder, this might be easier to navigate because you're able to actually set up the logic of a flow really quickly and then actually understand where you need to change parameters or where things are going wrong. So it's a great step in the right direction, much cleaner than all the previous efforts at creating an NAN builder, but it's still a way off being actually functional. However, I will say that it allows beginners to much easier see the logic of workflows and therefore could be really beneficial. So this shows you how to cheat code your way to building quick logical workflows. But if you're looking for a way to actually understand the foundations of all the nodes on screen and 80% of what you need to know about NAN, then make sure to watch the video that I'm about to link where I cover the key 13 nodes that you need to understand to master NAN and build automations.